When you spin a spinning top, you give it kinetic energy, which is slowly lost to air resistance and friction. But what if you could also give it another form of energy to help it spin longer? This video is sponsored by KiwiCo. More on them later. A few years ago, I came across a video uploaded by Laser Saber, and he built a motor that runs almost like a perpetual motion machine. This motor had a spinning disc with magnets on it and 12 coils mounted around the perimeter. And by blowing through a straw, he could spin the wheel up to speed and the motor would seemingly spin forever. And it's off and away. Isn't that a thing of beauty? Now of course it's not perpetual motion, hence the almost in the title, and it does eventually come to a stop. But it used a really interesting concept that I want to try out myself, and see if it can be adapted to power a car. In Laser Saber's motor, he used 42 gauge copper wire, which is incredibly thin, at roughly the same diameter of a human hair, and almost the same colour as mine. But this copper wire is far weaker than human hair, as I'm able to snap it with very little force. So that's going to be fun to solder. To make the coils, I made this spool holder so I don't have to keep turning it, and 3D printed these coil mounts so I can wind the coils using my drill, which I'm glad I don't have to wind by hand. So after winding some more coils, I had to solder them together, which wasn't easy. But after several frustrating hours, I had built this prototype test motor. This motor has a disc with magnets attached and coils mounted in an axial flux configuration, which basically means two on either side of the rotor. And as each magnet passes the coils, a perfectly timed pulse of electricity causes one coil to repel the magnet and the other to attract it. Now this pulse of electricity needs to be precisely timed or the motor could either spin backwards or not spin at all. And this timing is controlled by a small component called a reed switch. A reed switch has two thin metal arms inside of a glass capsule. And when a magnet is close to the switch, the two arms are attracted together and make contact, allowing current to flow through the circuit. And as you can imagine, the position of this reed switch is very important to how well the motor runs. Now in theory, this motor should also work as a generator if I spin the wheel by hand. So here I've connected a capacitor to the input of the motor, which as you can see from my voltmeter, is completely discharged. Therefore, if I spin the motor by hand, it should act as a generator and charge the capacitor. But notice what happens once the voltage peaks in the capacitor. It starts to discharge. And this is because the voltage in the capacitor is now higher than what's been generated in the coils. And therefore the capacitor is now powering the motor. So if I spin the wheel up to high speed, the capacitor charges up as it stores energy. Then it automatically switches from a generator to a motor and runs continuously for several minutes. Now this same effect could be achieved with a heavy flywheel and low friction bearings, or even just a well-tuned spinning top. But what those can't do is be slowed down to a complete stop and automatically spin back up to speed once released. So what I'm thinking is designing a trike style vehicle that can be powered with this motor to see if it can travel further than a freewheeling car once pushed along a surface. Because I want this car to be as simple and efficient as possible, I'm going to use the motor as the front wheel itself. So there'll be a number of coils mounted around the front axle, and then I can mount magnets to the wheel, which will hopefully drive it along. And because the motor is the main wheel to drive the car along, I 3D printed it on my Prusa XL due to its tool changing, which allowed me to use stiff PLA for the wheel hub and a flexible TPU material for the tyre, which should give it some grip just like a real car. So I've spent about a day winding and soldering up all these coils. There's six of them on this side of the wheel. I haven't actually put the coils on the other side of the wheel yet. Uh, and the reason for that is I don't think this car's going to work. Uh, if I spin this up to charge up the capacitor and then stop it, it does run like the test motor, but nowhere near the speed and also nowhere near enough torque. Even with these wheels on the back, there's no way that that's going to power itself along. Even with my benchtop power supply connected, so it's powered with an external source, uh, it just about moves when I put enough voltage in, but it's nowhere near enough torque to actually run the car. So what I'm thinking is redesigning the car with a gear ratio, so it will require less coils while hopefully producing more torque at the wheel. This version 2 car is also a trike design and was designed in Onshape, which is a cloud-based CAD program that runs in your browser. 
which you can try today by checking out the link in the description below. Also, with a total of 8 coils instead of 12, this new car will both weigh less and take less time to solder. Then to get the required torque at the front wheel, there is a 5 to 1 gear ratio. And with the reed switch mounted in the correct position and a capacitor in the rear, the car is complete. But does it work? By pushing the car forward, the capacitor charges up, and then it switches from a generator to a motor and powers the car along. I can even charge up the capacitor by giving it a few pushes forward, then setting it down on a surface and giving it a small push to activate the reed switch, almost like an electric wind up car. I'm actually quite surprised how well this car works to be honest, with this very basic motor and a very small capacitor in the back. Uh, by just spinning the wheel a few times, we can charge up the capacitor and if we give it a tiny push just to engage the reed switch with the magnet, it powers the car really easily. And what's also interesting is it works quite well as a generator. So for example, if I push it along this distance to, to charge up the capacitor, put it at the beginning of the distance and get it moving, it travels quite slow, but it also travels a fair way along the distance that I moved it. Now obviously not the whole distance because it's not 100% efficient, but it's pretty good. But before you fit one of these generator motor combos to your car, I want to tell you about this video's sponsor, KiwiCo. A lot of the projects I build help me explore and learn new concepts, but they're not always the easiest to replicate. Fortunately, KiwiCo can help with their hands-on projects that are designed by experts and tested by kids. These crates can be delivered to your door on a monthly basis and provide a creative, fun experience for all ages with their nine different lines. I honestly wish I had these KiwiCo crates as I was growing up, and I'm sure a lot of you who follow my projects would agree. Being able to build a project from start to finish without the need of popping to the hardware store or using special tools is such a nice experience. Not to mention the included build instructions are very easy to follow and the included magazine is packed full of interesting information. So if you're like me and want to get your hands on some KiwiCo crates, you can get 50% off your first month by using the code Tom Stanton, or by going to kiwico.com forward slash Tom Stanton. The link will be down in the description below. So if this car is able to store its own energy to power itself along, how does it compare to a car without a generator? This car is identical in weight and I kept the magnet part of the motor as it will act as a flywheel and affect the results. So the only difference is the coils and the capacitor. Okay, I have no idea how these cars are going to compare, but physics would suggest that if we push them up to the same speed, they should travel the same distance. So let's see. The free wheel car gets a good lead. The generator car is going much slower. The free wheel car is coming to a stop and the generator car goes further. That doesn't quite make sense. I think we need to rerun the test, make sure the capacitor is fully discharged. Yep, that motor's not running at all. Line them up. And... Free wheel car takes the lead again. Generator car is way far behind. And the generator car wins. So the generator car must be capturing energy from somewhere that isn't obvious from this test. But what happens if we send both cars down a ramp? This gives both cars identical amounts of starting potential energy, and it's clear the car with the motor travels down the slope far slower. So just before release, both cars have the same gravitational potential energy. But as they travel down the slope, the freewheeling car converts more of its potential energy into kinetic energy whereas the car with the generator converts a portion of this energy into electrical energy and stores it in the capacitor. It's easy to forget that when electricity is generated, a resistance load is applied to the generator. Like with my hand crank generator, if I spin it without charging anything, there is very little resistance. But as soon as I use it to charge a capacitor or battery, it suddenly becomes far more difficult to turn, which is why the car runs slower down the ramp, because there is a resistive load whilst the capacitor charges up. Now this stored energy in the capacitor does eventually get converted back into kinetic energy as the capacitor then powers the motor. But because the system isn't 100% efficient, the overall travel distance is less. 
So if the ramp test shows that adding a few coils, magnets and a capacitor doesn't gain an advantage over a freewheeling car, why does the push test show otherwise? The main difference between these tests is the force that's applied to each car. So in the ramp test, there is a constant force acting on each car due to gravity. However, with the push test, the generator car requires more force to get it up to the same speed. And this would be like rerunning the ramp test, but the generator car gets a steeper decline, so they both leave the ramp with the same kinetic energy, which makes it far clearer why the generator car travels further. But there is a method to make the freewheeling car win the push test. If we apply a force to the car over a given distance, this is known in physics as doing work, and is calculated by multiplying the force by the distance. So if both cars are pushed up to the same speed, the generator car not only requires more work due to the larger force, but it's able to store this work in the capacitor, whereas the freewheeling car can only use its final kinetic energy. Therefore, if we push both cars up to speed in the shortest distance possible, very little work is done and the generator car isn't able to charge up the capacitor enough to win the race. But I have an idea that the freewheeling car will never compete with. This is a Peltier pad which is often used in portable coolers, as when power is applied, one side heats up and the other side cools down. But this also works in reverse, so if we apply heat to one side and cool the other side with a heatsink, it produces electricity. Now my friend and fellow YouTuber Sam Barker had the idea of making a car powered by these Peltier pads, and he built a prototype to test it. However, the pads produce so little power that many off-the-shelf motors won't run on. So with no load attached, the Peltier pad produces about 1 to 1.4 volts. It's uh, getting a bit hot for my fingers now. I've got a resistor here so we can apply a load to the... Um, that's a bit easier to hold now, uh, but we're only getting about 0.32 volts, uh, which according to my calculations is about 0 0.065 watts, or about 65 milliwatts. However, if my calculations are correct, this generator car should be able to run off about 20 milliwatts. So let's see if we can power this car with a candle. To do this, I built a whole new car as the coils need to be specifically wound for the low input voltage. And I designed this platform on the rear of the chassis to hold the candle. And the Peltier pad can sit on top of a wire mount to hopefully prevent the 3D prints from melting. So with the candle lit, it's ready to run. Or not. Let's add a bit of ice to cool the heatsink a bit and hopefully get more power. This is technically working, but it's extremely slow. So I sourced a few extra candle wicks to make a custom three wick candle for more heat and use my heat gun to get the wax flowing. So with hopefully three times the heat and some ice on the roof, we should have enough power. This video started as a car with an efficient generator and motor that could recoup energy like regenerative braking in modern day electric cars. And now it's done a full loop to a combustion ice powered electric hybrid thing. Either way, I hope you found this video interesting and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.